You're staring at your screen, trying to remember that one statistic or quote that would solve your current problem. Did you read it in a newsletter? Maybe it was a YouTube video. Or was it stored away in a PDF somewhere in iCloud? I've been there far too many times, and as a busy professional juggling a YouTube channel, a podcast, a newsletter, and a full-time job, losing and misplacing information and forgetting what I read isn't just annoying, it's costly. After trying dozens of solutions over the years, I finally found it, the one app that transforms how I process digital information. It's April 2025, and the app of the month is Readwise Reader. But here's what I didn't expect. The most powerful feature of Readwise Reader is one of its most basic, and it might transform how you think about digital reading. So the objective is simple and important. Remember what you read and be able to find it. Let's talk about what Readwise Reader is in the first place. Readwise calls it the first Read It Later app built for power readers. They promise you'll be able to save everything in one place, highlight like a pro, and replace several apps with Reader. It can handle PDFs, websites, various texts, even YouTube videos. And one of my favorite features is newsletters. Right now, Readwise Reader is technically in beta and it's included in the Readwise plan. Now, pricing for the Readwise plan has gone up recently. Uh, legacy pricing that I'm on is uh, $95 a year. Right now, if you sign up and you don't already have an active Readwise subscription, it'll cost you $120 per year. Now, for that $120, you get access to the main Readwise service that everybody should know and love at this point that lets you highlight things in Kindle and different eBooks and syncs them to the Readwise database. And then you can put all that into whatever note system you're using for your second brain. It syncs with Apple Notes, Obsidian, LogSec, Notion, and more. And in my opinion, is one of the must have things as we move into the digital note taking future. Now, Reader itself can be set up as a standalone application using Safari, so you can add it to your dock on Mac, but it also has a standalone app on the iPhone and the iPad that works really great. Beyond just reading content where and when you want, Readwise has two key features that help you remember the things that you put into it. First is Daily Digest, and the second is the Readwise Review. At this point, you might be thinking, great, Bill, now I have another app, another place to send things, and another thing that I have to check and manage data within. And I feel your pain. For the first little bit, that's exactly what I did. I put things into the app, and then I totally forgot about them. That was at least until I figured out how powerful Readwise Reader is. Before my Readwise system, basically all of the knowledge that I'd gained through books it's pretty much gone. Scattered information, folded pages, underlined highlights within books. I'd find myself searching my bookshelf, pulling books off, trying to find that one highlight that I wanted for a particular article or a YouTube video or even just my general knowledge. Now I had tried to use systems like Apple Notes and put my highlights in there so they could become searchable. And that was an okay solution, but I do read a fair amount of books on the Kindle. So having something that could sync all of those highlights into a centralized location as well was needed. Reader is pretty intuitive to use. It's packed full of power user features, but it's basically broken down into what they call the library and the feed. Let's start with the library. This is where most of your content is going to live. It has a browser extension built into Safari or Chrome and lets you save basically anything from the internet into Readwise. By default, it's going to go into your library, which consists of an inbox. And in the library inbox, you can either select later or archive. And this is where my personal opinion is. If I'm sending an article to Readwise Reader already, I by default want to read it later. So I don't waste time messing with categorizing things out of the inbox into later. And I just leave them all in the inbox and process them as I go. And then if I highlight things in them, they go into the archive. Sometimes I'll even delete things if I read through it and then I don't highlight anything. 
I probably don't need to keep it. So it takes out a little bit of the tedious workflow. You don't have to retain that mental capacity to try to remember to check more than one thing inside the app, going to the inbox, going to later, or going to archive. But I do recommend you try out whatever workflow you think works best for you. This is just what works best for me. The second is the feed. And the feed is a place where you can send all of your digital newsletters. Personally, I don't like my newsletters cluttering up my email or my Gmail inbox. And if I'm reading a newsletter, I think it's going to have something valuable to me that I may want to save for later. So I subscribe to a bunch of different newsletters, some on Substack, some elsewhere throughout the internet, and they pretty much all go into my Readwise feed. With the feed, it has its own email address. You can customize that address, but by default, I set up text replacement on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. So I type in RWF, Readwise feed, and then it auto-populates the email address so I don't have to remember it. That way, signing up for new newsletters, I don't have to put my own email address in there. It all goes to Readwise. And then the feed is broken up into just simply seen and unseen, which is really great. So as you read through uh, the different newsletters, obviously the ones you've seen go into seen, they get hidden from the list, and then you can scroll through all the unseen items as you scroll through the feed. With newsletters, I do wish it was a little bit easier to um, delete them and get rid of them. I mean, I guess storage isn't really at a premium here. You're not um, saving large amounts of data in this, but um, I don't like to keep digital clutter around. So if it's something that I read that I didn't highlight anything in, like I said, I don't need to keep that in my newsletter feed either. Reader also has some interesting implementations of AI, and we'll start with Ghost Reader. It does things like give you summaries of the document, albeit they're pretty slim, not very detailed, and they're rather short. If you put an article into something like Claude or ChatGPT, it can give you a much better summary, but this works more like an executive summary, which is kind of cool. There's auto highlighting in the app. I don't typically use that because obviously if I'm reading it, I want to highlight it. I know what's valuable to me right now. AI doesn't know what's valuable to me. So um, I don't use auto highlighting. But highlighting YouTube videos is something that's really cool. So I've mentioned that you can put a YouTube video in. It either generates or pulls the transcript. I'm not sure which one it's doing. Um, and as you play the video, it will follow along in the transcript down through the reader app. And then you can highlight certain passages of text out of YouTube videos. This is especially helpful if you watch long form podcasts on YouTube, like I do sometimes, Colin and Samir, or the other interview style podcasts that have little tidbits of information that you just have to jot down into a note or have to highlight right then and there. This is where Reader is really helpful for YouTube videos. You can also have Reader read the article back to you. So it kind of turns newsletters or articles into a podcast of sorts. Now the AI voice isn't that great yet, but I'm sure it'll get better over time. And it's just an interesting way to consume some of the things that you've put into the app that you may not want to read. And then there's the typical features like Readwise has on their website where you can have the thing ask you questions or quiz you or you know various other methods to try to help you retain the information that you've saved. And now even on the Readwise web website, you can um, do kind of an AI chat with all of your highlights. So you can ask it a question and it'll try to find a highlight that um, has the answer to what you're asking. So I think that's cool. The AI implementation right now is a little bit iffy, but you know all of these things as the AI models progress are going to continue to get better over time. And this definitely shows some pretty good use cases for AI, in my opinion, in its current state. Remember the superpower that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? It's not the AI features, although those are improving. It's not the clean interface or the fact that you can put YouTube videos into the app and highlight it. Those are also excellent. And it's not only that Readwise Reader is just a read it later app. It's so much more than that. 
it sort of functions like the front end to your personal knowledge database. Every highlight, every saved quote, every important tidbit of information gets automatically saved and synced with your second brain. Whether you use Obsidian or Apple Notes, LogSec, Notion, or more, you can easily find all of this information and the search is at your fingertips. And the easier the information is to access, the easier it is for you to remember what you read. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you using a Read It Later app? Are you going to go grab a Readwise subscription? Personally, I think Readwise is the best option on the market today. Thanks for watching the app of the month. We'll see you later. <laughs>